Hey, it's your boy Shalom. When the start of souls, but give no praise to Yahweh, but Hashem, my Hashem, but Hashem, my Kadosh. The belongs to the apostles of James and honestly, brothers in the work of the Most High, truth and sincerity. This is um just a real quick one on you know a bit, a bit of information that I just come across. Um, and this is the Manila spell M A N I W L A, different to the capital of the Philippines, which is M A N I L A. Um, although if there's a relationship between the two names, I don't know, but um, but yeah. So this is this is uh, it says copper was a red gold of African had been both mined there and traded across the Sahara by Italian Arab mer uh, merchants. The early Portuguese explorers of the 1470s observed that copper bracelets and leg bands were the principal money all along the West African coast. They were usually worn by women to display their husband's wealth. The Portuguese crown contracted with manufacturers in Antwerp and elsewhere to produce crescent rings with flared ends of wearable size, which came to be called Manila, after the Latin manus, or from the Man uh, or from Manila, plural of monole, which means necklace. And you can see it uh, here. You know this. This is kind of how it look. Kind of looks like a horse. It kind of looks like a doorknob. Kind of looks like a chain. Um, so. You know that that's that's a you know that's a Manila for you. Right, so Manila Manilas were were brace brass bracelet shaped objects used by Europeans in trade with West Africa from the 16th century to the 1930s. They were uh, and you know when they said trade, they were used to buy slaves, man. Right, uh, where I originally saw this from the documentary, basically saying like how uh, this is that one of these was uh, enough to buy one slave. Other sources of information were basically saying a couple of these, maybe four of these were enough to buy a slave. And then, you know, just looking at it now, it's like, that, what, four of those, one of those is, is you know, one Israelite man. Right? It just, just goes to show you, and hey, who are these? And his apostles broke it down, man. Look, you know, these 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 Edomites, these devils, they're all trading with other Jakes, man. Now we say the Ashanti are so called um uh, uh Israelites. They, they they issued an apology like uh, what two a couple of years back, basically going into the uh, um ba basically saying, Look, man, hey, we're sorry we had a part in this, right? The Ashanti being a tribe in the in, in, in Ghana. Uh tribal people in Ghana, they they basically put out set out an apology. So it just goes to show you, hey, Jay, 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 be wicked. But this is this is part of the curses. This is one of those things that must, that had to happen, right? Because we weren't off, and the prophecy had to be fulfilled. It says First Timothy six and ten. So for the love of money is the root of all evil, while which some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Money itself isn't. A problem. There's nothing wrong with money. Scriptures say the contrary. Scriptures say money is a defense, right? Um, but the love of money—that's when you go above and beyond, right? Doing at whatever you can to get said money. And that's what these J those Jakes uh, were doing for you know for one of those to basically be enough to buy yourself a you know a a a. a, a but basically, be enough for you to sell a uh, one of you know a slave, you know, sell uh, your your fellow Israelite. Hey man, Jake, Jake was wicked, man. Jake, Jake, hey, and you know, you know it to be true because to this day, Jake be having that bad mind one toward another. This is Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty eight. Says and the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way. And so it's Egypt here is referring to uh, America. Read Revelation eleven and eight. Right, it speaks about the, their bodies, which were spiritually. Uh, let me let me let me grab it. That uh, should be here somewhere. It's Revelation eleven and eight. It says and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right, which is Babylon, which is America. America is that great city. Uh, it says which spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom. You think about how America has uh, uh, pushed out, you know, this this whole LGBTQ all over the world. And Egypt representing bondage, representing slavery, 
This is where also our Lord was crucified, going into uh, the fact that once again, America is that place where that image of uh, a Cesare Borgia is pushed out. This, this, this Jesus character is pushed out the most from that place. Well, you know, via, via, via the media, via Hollywood. And I didn't break down the dead bodies. I was referring to Israel in a dead state of mind. Proverbs twenty one sixteen: He that walketh out of the con out of he that walketh on the ways of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right, so that's what it means there in uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight by uh, uh, would you call it Egypt? And if you know Israel and Egypt, they share land borders. So this is talking about a different place. So and Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So who will we sold unto? We'll sold unto the so called white man. The so called white man is our enemy, man. Right? It says, and no man shall buy you. And this is uh, going in this old Quaker English for saying, no man shall redeem you. Right? And in fact, there's a precept in here. Um, so Deuteronomy 32 and 6, it says, Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? All right, so if we view usages of this word here, and this is Quana uh, H7069, and the Hebrew, right? Uh, is this the right word? Did I put the right word? No, it's a Genesis still. Not there. Uh, da, da. If you see here, it's the same. It's the same word, right? Is he not thy father that hath bought thee? Right? Is, 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 is he not thy father that has redeemed thee? Right. So that's what it means there. By no man shall buy thee, because once again, all of these kingdoms became great by way of slavery. If you've got a free, if you've got a labor force that works for free, then what do you, you, you know, you become a great nation. So no, no people whatsoever have ever turned down the opportunity to buy slaves. So anyone who's trying to say, oh, but it says, but uh, which called the so-called Negro, uh, he was bought. That means it's not talking about that. Nah, you, 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 you do uh, not understand the scriptures, man. All right. But as I was saying, this, this, this had to happen because it was prophecy, because Israel went off. And also so that the Lord could come back in these last days and punish uh, 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 these Edomites for the wickedness that they've done to the children of Israel. And, you know, <sighs> look, man, we go and look back in the kingdom and just be like, yo, Israelites sold other Israelites for this. As always, Lord's word, I was edifying to the next time, Shalom.